Hey, good morning, good morning, hello, and happy Thursday. I just had to look at my laptop screen to see what day it was, I always forget. Um, so I just wanted to pop in, as always, my lives are completely impromptu, unscheduled, just off the cuff, on the fly. When I feel inspired and want to talk about something, I jump on and do a live. So here I am. Um, as, as I did say in my live last week, I do want to get better and actually more consistent at having a specific time where I do go live and actually talk about specific topics um, and do like a recap of the content I've covered during the week. And sorry, I'm looking at two screens as well as usual because I'm live on Facebook and Instagram. Um, so I'll try and capture both places' attention. Um, but yeah, so I really want to try and actually get consistent in when I do my live so that you guys can get used to it and can show up with questions and I can actually make these lives really beneficial to you as well and it's not just me rambling on. Um, but I was feeling quite inspired today and I wanted to talk about a topic that I've found to be quite important. Um, and I really just wanted to share it to see what people, what other people think about it, whether you do this, um, and like what your kind of mornings look like and stuff like that. Because I am so, so what I'm going to be talking about this morning is like morning routines and how you set your day up when you're in business or like working for yourself from home, or even if you are still in a job, it's probably even more important to consider how you start your morning because if you're going to a job you really don't like and you're waking up feeling negative and upset about it, then that can set up for a really bad day. So I just wanted to talk about this topic because I think it is a really important topic and it's something that I've struggled with. And so I'm, I'm definitely going to be honest here and say morning routines are not a strong point for me. Um, hi, ladies. Nice to see you guys. Um, yeah, morning routines are definitely not a strong point for me. So I'm not going to sit here and preach and say you have to have a morning routine. It's it's going to – I know it can change your life. I've heard it from lots of people, but I'm not going to be the, the person that says that if you don't have a morning routine, you're not going to succeed and all of that kind of stuff. But I just wanted to share a little bit of my experience that I've had with morning routines over the last few months because it's something that I have become conscious of and it's so, I'm so self-conscious about my hair since I did my fringe myself. Um, I know you're not meant to think about this stuff when you're live but I, I do and I've actually been learning from Amy Porterfield and watching her live every day and she does talk about her hair so it makes me not feel so bad because I always felt guilty every time I thought about my hair. Um, Anyway, so I just wanted to share a little bit about my experience with morning routines over the last few months because I've tried so many different ones and I've definitely struggled to stick at them, especially ones that involve exercise. So um, a few months ago, probably going back August-ish, July, August-ish, I was getting into the habit of going for morning walks and it was really setting my day off really well. I was walking to the beach. I was getting to the beach. I love the beach. I was actually making it there like just after sunrise. So the sun was beautiful and on the way there, I was listening to podcasts and it was really starting my day really nicely because I love the beach. It's a place that makes me really happy. And if I go there every day, especially if I start my morning there, then it starts my day off really well. But then I hurt my foot. And so I couldn't walk for a long time. Um, it still hurts. Um, but I've been just forcing it to be okay now. So it was really difficult for me to get up and go walking because I actually couldn't walk. And so that morning routine went out the window. Like I wasn't even a month of doing it and I hurt my foot. So I was like, well, I'm not meant to do this then. Um, but I do have a goal as soon as I move into my new house. I know everyone says you should start today. Don't put it off. Don't put it off. But I know me and I know it's not going to happen until I move. So that's, that's the truth of it. I'm not going to sit here and say, yeah, I'm going to start tomorrow because I know I'm not. So 
when I move to the new house, we're going to be five minutes away from the beach. So my walk isn't going to have to be the half an hour walk that it takes to get me to the beach. My walk will actually be at the beach. So it'll be a lot better for me. It's going to be something a lot more enjoyable and I'm going to get back into my morning walks. I've committed to it now. I've put it out there. I'm telling you guys it's happening. So we officially move out of this place on the 31st. We get the keys to our other place on the 19th. So we'll start moving in around that time. So in, by the end of October, I'm going to be back into my walking routine. And if you don't see me walking, then say, Jade, you said you're going to be walking and hold me accountable because I'm terrible at this stuff. I actually have also been speaking to a girl who I've been following for a little while who um, does nutritional coaching and that kind of stuff. And I have been speaking to her about getting into their program. They've got a challenge starting on the 4th of November. And I know myself, I know that I need that kind of motivation and accountability <laughs> to make me do stuff. And that's why when I was in Perth and I actually had a personal trainer, that was the best thing for me because it wasn't just myself I was letting down. If I didn't show up to a session, it was I was letting him down as well. And so that held me accountable and that forced me to go. And during that time, I was at my fittest ever. I was like super health freak. I was going to the gym twice a day, not just once. I would do my PT sessions in the morning and then go to his classes at night as well. So I was extreme. Um, but then I, I started my business and I can't blame my business for it but because it was my choice, but I did make that take priority. And so I stopped going to the gym. I stopped doing a lot of stuff because I really wanted to focus on my business. And this is a trap that a lot of – sorry, it's so windy here. I actually wanted to sit outside and do this so you could see the pretty trees and the nice pool and stuff um, and hear the birds, but it's so windy. It was blowing all my papers around my lap fell off the table so I was like no I have to go inside um and now I lost my train of thought something to do with health and fit that's right so when you start a business it's easy to fall into the trap of just making your business your priority and letting everything else fall away and then you get to this point where you're like I've kind of forgotten who I am. I've stopped focusing on myself. I haven't been giving myself the attention I deserve. And you, it can go into this spiral and lead to burnout. And I don't know you about you guys, but especially me as an introvert. And I was just listening to James Wedmore's podcast this morning, the Mind Your Business podcast. If you haven't heard of him, it's awesome. Um, I really love listening to him because he does talk a lot about introverts and how it, how it's actually a benefit in business and why we're so drawn to create online businesses because of our personalities and because we do thrive on being in control of when we are involved with people and when we have our alone time. So I really love listening to his podcast. And he did talk about the need to step back and actually give yourself time to relax and rejuvenate. And as an introvert, we need this time like every week. We can't put this time off or that leads to burnout. And so this was something that I've definitely experienced in my business over the last few years. And especially if you know my story and you've been following me for a little while, um, just like this time last year was when I lost my nonna and things started to go downhill in my business because I just started to question everything. Why am I doing this? I'm burning out. I'm working too much. I like, I couldn't switch off to, heal and all of that. And so I did end up taking a lot of time off from my business and just reevaluating, reevaluating what I actually want to do. What, why do I have this business? What is my sole purpose and all of that kind of stuff. And so I think a really important thing is to recognize what you need outside of your business and to make time for that. And whether that's through a morning routine or having a set day where you take time out of your business and you actually just do stuff that makes you like makes you happy and brings you joy you need to make time for that because that kind of time actually inspires you more because when you're just focused 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 and all your attention is just on your business you get stuck in your business and you kind of lose track of everything else and you lose that creativity you lose that excitement you lose that reason why you started in the first place and that's when you can kind of spiral and lead to burnout and so this is why 
I've been trying to get into a morning routine for such a long time because I knew it was something that was good for me and it was something that was important and helps your business grow and all of that kind of stuff. But I just couldn't find a morning routine that I actually could stick to, (laughs) to be honest. Like I've tried everything. I've tried meditating, the walking, um, never yoga because I don't like it. I did. I have done yoga retreats where it was good, but I just am not good at it. Um, yeah. What else have I tried? I've tried the meditating. I've tried exercising, (laughs) walking, um, and lots, lots of things. But the thing that has really stuck for me and the one that I've really noticed a huge difference is journaling. So you would see every morning if you follow my Instagram stories that I share one of my little intuition cards. So this is kind of my way of staying accountable and showing you that I am doing this every day. Um, And I like it because it's like a little inspirational card and if other people can benefit from the message that I'm getting each day as well, then that's a nice thing to share what's inspiring me each day. So this is part of my morning routine now. So every morning I get up now because I'm actually in DCA. um, Lots of people are joining. Hi guys. But so because I'm actually in DCA and I'm going through Amy Porterfield's course at the moment and she does daily live Q and A sessions, I don't want to miss them live. And they're actually at 6 AM my time. So I must admit that my morning routine doesn't actually start until after I've attended the live Q and A because I actually love them and they start my day off really well as well. Um, so I, I make that my first thing. You would have seen this morning as well that I was listening to a couple of podcasts first. So being someone that wakes up at like 4am, which is ridiculous o'clock and I would love to bounce out of bed and get my day started. But when it's dark, I just, I don't like getting out of bed, especially when I'm home alone. I'm like, Oh, I just, I just, I'm still a bit of a scared you when it comes to being alone in the dark so I stay in bed until it gets light basically and so if I'm up at 4am and it's still dark outside then I like to like listen to a podcast because it's a positive way to start my day I listen to something inspirational motivational that kind of stuff so as I said I love listening to James Wedmore's one because it's like kind of mindset tied in with business. So it's really inspirational. Um, And he's got a really soothing voice, which is nice when you're still half asleep. So I love that one. Um, Otherwise, the other ones I do listen to is the Gold Digger podcast or Amy Porterfield's, but I tend to listen to them like later in the day. They're not my first thing in the morning ones. Um, And the other one I love is the Angie Lee show. So they're my go-to podcasts when I want to start my day when I'm up at ridiculous o'clock and I don't want to get out of bed. So that's kind of how my day starts. My biggest thing, and this is something I've had to really be conscious about, is that I do not open my emails and I do not open social media. So until I have been through my podcast, my um, Q&A session with Amy, and then my journal time, I do not check Facebook, Instagram, or my emails, because that's that was a bad habit I was in, and I really needed to get out of that because I was putting so much pressure on myself, checking these things, and then that, that can really af- affect your day if you see something that is not quite what you wanted to see, or you open your inbox and there's something there that you don't want to see, then it can really start your day off in not a, such a positive way. And so that's why I've really like become conscious of that that I do not check social media. So I, well, I do go on Facebook for Amy's lives, but that's all. So I listen to my podcast, I do my live Q&A session with Amy, and then my official morning routine starts. So I get up out of bed and I go out, I come out and I make my cup of tea or coffee in my special mug. So I love that it's got like an inspirational message on it. So every day I look at that mug and I'm like, okay, a day without laughter is a day wasted. So I must find something to laugh about today. And I usually do, which is good. (laughs) So usually my stupidity and awkwardness on things like this. So there you go. Um, But yeah, so I make my tea and my coffee or my coffee and I go and place that outside. I like to sit outside because generally when I, by the time I am out there, like the sun's up, it's, 
like the early morning time when the birds are crazy and I love listening to the birds. We have all the rainbow lorikeets and um, kookaburras and all kinds of birds flying through our garden, which is so lovely to watch, except for the one morning when the crow came and attacked the kookaburra and I thought they were going to come and get me. And except for the mornings when the magpies are out because they're horrible things. I know everyone says, oh, the magpies are nesting and be nice to them, but they attack us, not the other way around. So I do not like magpies. Um, so yeah, I like to sit outside and I like to listen to the birds because it's really lovely. It's a beautiful sound. The wind blowing, the sun shining, the blue sky. It's really lovely setting to sit and actually get inspired. And so I do that and then I have two journals. So... I know, I, I like to be overkill. I actually had three at one point, but I ran out of room in the other one and I thought, okay, it's time to actually just go to two because I wasn't actually doing any of them properly. Um, but I have a million different journals and I love it. And so I do need, I, I've now drilled it down to these two, which is kind of perfect. So the first one I write in is like a free flowing one. So this is just like, normal pages where you just write um, and so I actually I used to struggle with journaling because I didn't know what to journal about and so what I actually did recently was I for I don't know if anyone else follows Sabrina Phillip look at all the people I'm talking about today I'm just like promoting all these un other entrepreneurs that I love um, but I follow Sabrina Phillip and she recently put out a mindset course and as part of that she gave um, she had another little thing that you could buy, which was 111 journaling prompts. And so I bought that and it has been so amazing to see what, like, what it inspires because every day there's a different prompt and so it gives you something to journal about. Um, and it's got all different topics. So it's got like your general stuff, then sales, then personal, lifestyle, money, all of that kind of stuff. So it's working through and it's like 111 journal props for abundance. And so that was a really good investment for me because I know that journaling is like, I'm a writer, so I love writing. And for me, that is a really good release and a really good way to start my day. And I've been doing it for 25 days now. So they say that it takes 21 days to form a habit. So everything else I've tried, I have not stuck to. I've tried, like I said, I've tried the meditation. I've tried the walking. I've tried so many other things and I just don't stick to it. But I finally found the thing that works for me. And that's why I'm saying I'm not here to preach and say, this is what you should do. I just wanted to share my experience because it's really making a difference for me. And so I write in this journal, I have my little prompt for the day and then I set a timer for like 20 minutes or most of the time I go over the 20 minutes, but that's what she encourages you to do is to set the timer for 20 to 30 minutes and to just let it flow because in the beginning I was kind of just like writing and then when I ran out of ideas I stopped and I was finding it wasn't doing a lot for me. But when you actually sit there and just continue to write and have, like, I wasn't writing for long enough and I was losing the ideas. Um, but when you actually time, like, time yourself and give yourself a long time to do it, like, 30 minutes can sound super long. But when you actually put your mind to it and just sit there and let it flow, then really awesome stuff comes out. And what I've found is it has really improved my creativity and helped me with my content creation and that's why I wanted to talk about it because it's not just about hey have a fun morning routine and blah blah blah, blah. I, I'm actually tying it back in with content which is what I've been talking a bit about this week and I know I've spoken about what types of content I think are best and all of that kind of stuff and so I've been feeling so much more inspired because the prompts give me things to, to start thinking about, but by the end of it, my mind has gone in all these other tangents and I've come away with so many ideas. And so as soon as I finish my journaling, I then go to my, my phone and I write out all these notes of different ideas. Like I come back out of my journal with about five to 10 different content ideas. And so I literally found a way to create content, which is so inspiring because before I was struggling and I was forcing myself to create content and it was all just like the educational content which 
everyone keeps creating. Like, it, I know you put your own personal spin on it, but I think the best value content is the content where you share your stories and it's coming straight from your heart and it's personal and you tie it in with how it's affected your life and all of that kind of stuff. Sharing stories is so valuable. Yay, I'm glad you agree. Um, so I have found that just sitting there for 20 to 30 minutes a day has inspired so much content that I actually really enjoy. Like I, I do, I plan it ahead because I've got so much content, but then I go to my phone and I get excited. I'm like, oh, that's what I'm posting today. Yay, I can't wait to post it because I really can't wait to see people's reactions to it. And it's really inspired so much great content that is actually getting a lot better reactions. So if you are someone that is struggling with content, I encourage you go get a journal and just, you don't need to go and buy prompts. Like you can start with things like some of the prompts I've, I can read some of them to you and just tell you some of the ones. So things like, what are my top priorities for the week? I would feel amazing at the end of the week if this happened. What do I need to let go of in order to move forward? What do I have to change to reach my goals? If I woke up tomorrow and a miracle had happened, how would I know it had occurred? These are just some of them. Is sales an act of service? I deserve to be compensated for my work because... So there's so many good prompts here that allow you to move into the tangent and to start thinking more deeply about things and then as because I am someone that just goes off in a million tangents, I end up coming out with so many different content ideas and I love it. My phone is full of notes of things I can write about now. And so that really helps with my Instagram content, but then it also helps to go deeper and have things that I can talk about. That's why I've started a podcast because I've got so much stuff to talk about now. Um, and that's why I'm now setting a goal of I'm actually going to launch one podcast every week on a Tuesday so that people know where to find me consistently. It's not just going to be random content like it has been for the last three years where I just put content out where I feel like it. It's going to actually be consistent because I'm still creating it when I'm inspired and I'm getting the ideas on the fly, but I'm putting it out consistently because I'm more strategic and more organized because I've learned how to be more organized. And that's all come from these processes of actually like having a morning routine. So if you are somebody that struggles for content, I do, I'm not going to say this is the only way to get inspired and create good content, but it is a really helpful way. And it's, definitely changed me in 25 days it has made such a difference and so I really want to encourage you guys if you are struggling to just give it a try you may find like I found meditating and walking and all of that other stuff didn't work for me you may find that journaling doesn't work for you but you never know if you don't try and so I just wanted to give you that little bit of encouragement to give it a try um so that's what I do. So I have that journal, which is like my free flow journal, which gives me like a hundred million content ideas. And then I have my gratitude journal. So every day it prompts me to, this is a really good one. It has something you'll let go of, then what you're grateful for, and then your focus for the day. And so that's really helped me as well because I know my leg is going so numb. I have been sitting on it. Um, so I know a lot of people say that in order to um, achieve success and get the results you want, you need to be grateful for what you've got and you need to have an attitude of gratitude and all of that kind of stuff. But if you're just, if you're not conscious about it and you're not actually thinking about it, it's easy to get sidetracked by all the things that go wrong throughout the day. Maybe your laptop isn't working or you didn't get a piece of content created in time or a program, you couldn't figure out how to use a program and all these, or a client didn't show up for a call and all these things that can impact you can make you start looking at things a bit negatively and you lose focus of all the things that are actually really great about your business or great about your life. And so setting that time aside to actually think about what am I grateful for? What what has happened this day that has been really good. And you could do this at night as well. I like to do it in the morning because I do like to start my day 
on that positive note. Um, but a lot of people can do this at night as well. Um, but it is really nice to just take that moment to sit and think about all the great things that actually are in your life because it's so easy to get sidetracked and caught up in our stories of all the things that are wrong and all the things that aren't going our way and um, like just to lose that gratefulness because you just get caught up in what's going on and that's what does lead to burnout but when you actually take that time aside and you sit there and you focus and you realize how much you actually do have to be grateful for then it keeps you going in that positive direction and it's it's a really helpful task to just make you appreciate how far you've come because you could be sitting there going, I still haven't achieved my goals. Why am why is it not happening? And that's all you're focusing on. And you might think, oh, I know I need to stay positive. But when that's going on in your mind, then that's actually st preventing you from moving forward. So when you take the time to actually think about what you're grateful for, and then you look back and you go, wow. I actually have really come far since I started. That's awesome. And the more you do that, then the more you start to appreciate where you're at. And then the more, because you're putting out that energy that you're really happy and you're really grateful for where you are, then more great stuff keeps coming to you because that's the energy you're putting out. And it's all about energy with the universe and the way it all works. It, you get rewarded for the energy that you put out. So the more positive energy you're putting out there, the more you get rewarded with the things that you are actually wanting to create because you're feeling like you've already come so far. So that's what I just wanted to talk about today. Um, I did have some notes and I didn't look at them at all. <laughs> I just ran with what I wanted to say. Um, uh, I, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit more about how journaling has actually helped in my life as well. So basically, like I start, like the reason I started journaling was because I was feeling a little bit like, what am I actually doing in my business? <laughs> like, because as you know, like this year has been a very transitionary year for me. I decided to move away from affiliate marketing. I started. My leg is actually so numb. Um, <laughs> I started to create my own products and I was kind of trying to rush it all because I was like, well, I don't want to do affiliate marketing anymore and I just quit it basically and I didn't have anything to fall back on and so I was like, okay, I need to create my products. I don't want to do one-to-one -one work. I'm not going to go down that path. I do not want to coach people one-to-one -one because I know that that's something that just leads to burnout, not because I don't want to help people but I just know it's not a sustainable model and it's not the model I wanted to put energy into because I knew that that would just not achieve the results I'm wanting. I want to help many people and the way I know to do that is through a digital course and so I was trying to rush it all I was trying to get my course out there and I wasn't really focusing on all the things I needed to focus on like validating that I had the right course and um, ch checking that my clients wanted it and all of that stuff so that's why I've taken a step back I invested in Amy Porterfield's digital course Academy so that I can actually get my course right and launch it properly and actually make sure that I'm giving the best possible value to my students because it's not about me, it's about you guys and making sure that I create something that you actually want and that is actually going to give you the transformation you need when it comes to your personal branding. And so uh, that's why I started journaling because I really wanted to take that outside look on myself and really think about why I was rushing the process and where I want to be and who I want to serve and all of that kind of stuff. And so through journaling it out, I've realized that it's okay to not have it all figured out instantly. And it's, I'm okay with where I'm at. And my big focus right now is I just want to serve my audience. I just want to get my product right so that when the time comes, you're going to actually get the most value out of it. And it's not a rushed job because I was just trying to get something out there. It's going to be something that is really going to help you get the results that you desire. And so journaling has helped me with that. Investing in Amy's course has helped me with that. other things that I've been learning 
through this process. It's also helped me in my relationship because before when I was like feeling frustrated about something that was going on in my business or in my life, I just take it out on my boyfriend. Whereas now I like, I spend that time in the morning having quality time, just focusing on my thoughts and what's going on and writing about it. And once I've written about it, it's out there, it's out of my system and I can move on. And so that's really helped because I stopped taking my ang like my frustration out on other people and I just get it out there, I get my thoughts, I process my thoughts properly and I figure out why I'm feeling that way and it's really helped me to be more positive. Um, so it's definitely helped and as I said, the biggest thing that journaling has helped me with is creating better content. So. I get so excited about my content now. It's not a pressure. Like I've always loved creating content. You'd, you'd know that if you follow me because it's what I do. I just really like creating content. But there have been times where I've been like, what am I going to post? And I just post for the sake of posting because I felt like I had to. Whereas now I don't have that feeling at all. I've got 90 days worth of content ideas planned out and I've got more that just keeps getting added because I've got so many ideas and so much inspiration and that's all just come from taking time every day to journal and like actually spend time with my thoughts and allow myself to process things and not just rush straight into my business every morning because that's what I was doing before I was getting up I was getting turning my laptop on getting straight on social media and then getting lost in those rabbit holes of seeing what everyone else is doing, comparing myself to other people. I'm not, I'm not where they are. I'm not where my business was 18 months ago when I was doing well as an affiliate, but that's gone because the affiliate program is gone. So I needed to reevaluate and change things up. And so journaling has really helped. And I just wanted to share that with you guys, because if it can help you as well, then that's something I want to give you. So just give it a try. Um, other, and if you've got other morning routines, I'd really like to know what your morning routines are, what's helped you, what has given you the inspiration you needed to move forward and work through things and has really um, changed the way you approach your business and get better results. So I'd love to know that. But if you are somebody that is struggling and does want to create better content, then I do encourage you just go out, get a journal and just start writing. There's inspiration everywhere. If you don't know what to write about, then look up journal prompts and there's so many different ones you can find. So that's it from me today. That's probably like one of my longest lives. <laughs> um, but like I said, I am um, like, I, I've got so much content that I want to share and I am committed to Tuesdays is podcast day. Um, they'll probably come out around 11 a.m. I haven't actually officially let you know about the podcast yet because I'm waiting to get a few episodes live on there before I send people to it because I don't want you to go. I know what it's like when you go to a podcast, you end up like getting really invested in it and you want to listen to like three or four or five episodes at once. And if you go to a podcast and there's just one episode there, then you're not going to really get as much out of it. So I'm waiting until I've got a few more episodes on there and then I'll let you know all the details so you can go and find it and see if you like listening to me. Um, and, but if there is things you would like to hear about on a podcast, then let me know. I, I'm really open to suggestions because I'm creating this for you guys. Like my big focus right now is just to create valuable content and really serve my audience. Like that is my big focus right now. I'm I've not putting out any products at this stage. I'm not doing anything else. I'm literally just wanting to create content and give, like show you how this is really good for building a brand because this is what's then going to go into my course. I'm going to show you guys what I've done that has really taken my brand to the next level and I want to give you guys all that advice and that's going to be packaged into my course when I do go launch it properly because I'm reworking it all now. So I can't wait to share that with you guys. But at this stage, I'm just going to be creating lots of content. And so whatever you want to know about, let me know. I really want to serve you guys. So um, anything, anything to do with branding, marketing, social media, that even personal styling. I haven't really spoken a lot about that because um, I haven't really figured out how to tie it in yet. But it is something that 
I have learned a lot about now and I do want to share it with you guys because I think personal styling is such a huge part of personal branding too. Um, and so it is something I do want to start talking more about. So if there's specific things you struggle with when it comes to any of those topics, let me know and I will add them into my content schedule. I'm not... This is what I used to do as well before. People would say they wanted something and then I'd try to rush and create it straight away. Whereas now I'm planning it all out and you, the content will come, but it's not going to all come instantly. So if you say you want to learn about something, I will add it to the schedule. I'll think about where it fits and ties in with everything else that I've got to share. And I will make sure that it does come, but in a way where it's going to fit. So... I'd love to know what you guys want to hear about. Um, and yeah, so Tuesdays will be podcast day and then Thursday is blog day because I still like to write things. So I know a lot of people say pick one or the other. I'm going to go against the norm. May work, may not. I'm testing. Like everybody tests what works for them. And I am a natural writer. I love writing. So to just stop blogging just doesn't feel right to me. So still going to do my blog and Thursdays I still always do an IGTV video as well. So you're going to see me twice today on video because I still have my um, actual recorded video to share. But um, And then what I really want to do is I really want to get consistent with having a day where I do a live where I answer your questions like Q&A. I'm thinking it makes sense to do it on a Friday since I put content out on Tuesday and Thursday and then you can ask questions on everything I've spoken about during the week or else Monday maybe, start of the week, fresh, people are excited for the new week and give a bit of motivation and a pump up for the week. So I don't know. If you guys let me know which day works best for you, we'll see what I can do. Um, but yeah, that is it from me for today. Thank you to all of you who tuned in. I love being here with you guys. And I'll see you again next time. Bye for now. Have a fabulous, fabulous day. <laughs> Sorry, I'm ending it on Facebook.